Hello everyone, welcome to this new series video. In this series video, I'd like to discuss some topics that can connect the control theory with the industrial practice. Specifically, I'd like to demonstrate how can we implement the transfer function from control theory into the PLC, the common used controller in industrial world. If you have a control engineering background, especially if you learn the control theory from university or college study, you would familiar with the first order and second order transfer function. The first order and the second order transfer function are very classic models to represent one controlled process object. And once we have the transfer function, we can analyze this control system stability, performance, or steady state. So some people will ask why we need to recall those transfer functions, why we need to figure out some method to implement those transfer functions into the PLC. The answer may come from the digital twins. As we know, nowadays or the recent years, very common commissioning method, that is the virtual commissioning. Using the virtual commissioning, we can implement all the process object, motor, valve, or mechanical things into the virtual system. And we can do the virtual commissioning before we get the real process system. Using this virtual commissioning system, we can practice troubleshoot all the potential issues. We can get the entire control system 90% of ready. So while we have the real system, it can save us a lot of time being on site or can solve a lot of potential issue before we have the real system. However, we find one thing. While we are using the virtual commissioning system, we can find in the virtual commissioning system, it has tons of discrete I.O. system. For example, the motor on off, conveyor forward, backward. But it's rare to find those virtual commissioning system can simulate the process. For example, the water level, pressure, temperature, or a solar motor. They are really hard to simulate this. To simulate those system reaction, it basically have to use the transfer function first order or second order model into those software. This definitely needs some serious knowledge. And second, how can we implement one process model? That model can basically represent your real system. This basically depends on the parameters of those process model, whether those model can really represent your real system. Let's talk about how can we identify or determine a process model to represent your real system. Frankly speaking, in the engineering world, this is really hard to get them. Then this come up a topic, is there some practical way to identify to determine those common use to transfer function or process model? This is the main motivation in this video. So in this video, I will introduce using the practical way, how can we identify the parameter for the first order and the second order transfer function. And once we get a transfer function, it's not enough. How can we implement those transfer function into PLC? Let the PLC run those process model. Therefore, when we verify the PID function or any control function in the PLC side, we do not need any other actual hardware or any other software to simulate the process object. We can use those models running inside the PLC run as the controlled object. And to test the control function, once we finish the testing and we can disconnect those simulated object and then switch to the real system. So this switching can be seamless. The PLC here will be not limited to a specific brand. For example, Siemens, Backoff, Alambrelli, Omron, or other brands. Because in this video, when I implement those code, I will use the structure test. So basically the mainstream PLCs or code test system or even embedded system can implement those equations. Other than the first order and second order system, I will also introduce the common use of method. How can we program a low pass filter for PLC? For example, if you are using PLC to receive the analog signal for temperature, pressure, if the analog signal has a high noise, how can we implement the very simple equation to filter the noise? And I will also introduce how can we implement the integrating function. For example, for the solar motor positioning feedback, that definitely need to use the integral function. So how can we program the integration 
into the PLC. Then we can implement the function for the solar motor or solar valve model into the PLC. And also I will show how can we implement the lagging function. The lagging behavior are very common from your real process system. So simulating this lagging behavior is also very important. So number nine topic, I will introduce this. In number 10, I will show how can we implement a PID equation into the PLC. Even you are using the embedded system or using the code system, you can use this concept to implement the PID calculation into your controller. In the following weeks, I will publish all those topics and the videos one by one. If you like this topic or if you have any comments or recommendations or any other interesting topics you like to ask or discuss, please feel free to let me know, leave the comments or send an email to me. I'd also like to collect all the people who is also interested in this area so we can exchange the concept, exchange the idea so that we can improve our commissioning method and we can enhance our engineering method and knowledge. All right, this is this series video. In the next video, the first one topic, I will introduce how can we determine a first order transfer function. Firstly, we need to identify if a process system behavior shows or can be represented by a first order transfer function. If we identify the first order transfer function can represent your real system, then the second topic, how can we estimate the parameter for this first order transfer function, right? So once we have this parameter, then we can determine this transfer function. As long as we have this transfer function, then we can convert this transfer function into the Z domain and we can do a lot of things after. So first things we need to identify to determine the first order transfer function. All right, see you in next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.